It's Friday the 27th of August and this is Photo Walkthrough Tutorial 20 Episode 1. Welcome back to Photo Walkthrough. This is Tutorial 20 Episode 1 and today we've got a really interesting little tutorial where I'm showing you how to add fashion labels to your photographs in a Lightroom slideshow. I think it's a lot of fun and it uses some of the brand new features in Photoshop CS5 and Lightroom 3 and it's some of the Lightroom 3 features that we haven't covered yet in our video review so it kind of does double duty this. So before we do that I'd like to quickly mention a brand new way of showing your appreciation to Photo Walkthrough as you appreciate these shows are quite expensive and hard to produce and I don't make a lot of money from doing them. So if you'd like to just chip a little bit of cash into the tip jar, there's a brand new service called Flatter, F-L-A-T-T-R.com and it's a really easy way of just throwing some cash in a tip jar on a budget without it being overly expensive and, and overly onerous. Check it out and sign up there. If you, uh, It might still be on beta. If you'd like a sign up, um, just drop me an email at photowalkthrough.com. I can give you some, uh, um, some sign up codes to get you on the beta for it um, but it's really really a simple way to throw some money in the tip jar for shows and websites and blogs and videos that you appreciate look out for the flatter buttons all over the web now there is one on the right hand side of the photo walkthrough homepage, and I thank you very much if you consider clicking that um, also uh, we'd like to say a massive thank you to this week's show sponsor Angie's List Angie's List, I've got reviews of people to do work on your house or your car or healthcare professionals in your area given by people who've actually used these guys and who can tell you if they're any good. So that's what Angie's List is all about. It's giving you good service and finding you good, reputable, professional people in your area. If you'd like to sign up, you can get a 25% discount by using the promo code PHOTO when you sign up with Angie's List. And uh, we thank Angie's List very much for supporting Photo Walkthrough. Okay, let's get on with today's tutorial. I think you're going to enjoy this one. It's a lot of fun. We're going to start out in Lightroom and then go to Photoshop and then come back to Lightroom to use what we've made. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to Photo Walkthrough at photowalkthrough.com. Today I'm going to show you how I set up this uh, slideshow with this little this little tag at the bottom. I'd had this idea because I'm doing slideshows uh, occasionally for customers. I did a wedding the other day and I wanted to show a slideshow, but you know it's kind of kind of tacky just to stick your name in the corner. I wanted to do something that gave it a kind of a uh, a fun little feeling, and so I decided to do um, sort of like a name tag, like a like a, a label that you might get on on fashion clothes or something like that um, and also this is a great little tutorial because it shows you some of the brand new features in both Lightroom and Photoshop so I thought I'll just quickly show you how I did that because it was kind of a fun little thing and you might want to do a similar thing for your own slideshows um, and as I say it also gets us to uh, get a little bit of hands-on experience with some of the new features so um, first of all of course I need to take a photograph of something that, that has a tag on it um, and I chose uh, very appropriately this thingy here this is a um, the tag that holds the pen on the end of a uh, Wacom bamboo graphics tablet and I kind of thought that was sort of appropriate for photo walkthrough because I'm always going on about how great I think the Wacom graphics tablets are so um, so I'm using this little tag here as my source material and obviously I'm going to change the text that goes on there so the first thing I need to do is take a photograph so uh, let's put this here on the desk and switching over to cam 2 I'm going to grab my uh, grab my camera here uh, and I'm just quite simply going to snap this here on the desk so I'm just going to lean in get a good focus there you go there's my shot okay okay so we've taken our picture I've got the, the memory card got the memory card out of the camera and we're going to we're going to just bring this memory card over to uh, Lightroom. So let's just take um, a jump back into the library module here. And I'm just going to stick my memory card into the card reader here. And that's going to bring up the brand new um, import dialog. So this is the, the new Lightroom 3 import dialog. And uh, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of pictures already on this card. I, I, I run a small ticket printing business here in the UK, uh, ticketprinter.co.uk, ticketprinters.co.uk. And um, uh, I've been taking some photographs of some wristbands um, for our website there. So that's what's on the card. But <clears throat> you can see here at the bottom, 
the photograph I just took. Um, but let's just take a quick once around the around the interface here, because as you can see, this import dialog has changed quite a lot from the uh, uh, the version that we had in Lightroom 2 and before. Um, so they've really simplified it down. We've got a source column here on the left. We've got the photographs in the in the middle, and we've got sort of output stuff on the right here. And, and you can see they've even sort of broken it up. So we've got a source uh, header here with an arrow going through. Here's what we're going to do to it, and here's the photos we're going to we're going to work on. And over here we've got the output, and uh, in the output we've got the, the same stuff that we had in uh, previous versions of Lightroom. We can rename the files, uh, we can decide whether or not we want to import duplicates, we can back up the, f the files as they're imported to a separate backup location. Um, there's the renaming section, we've got a section on uh, applying develop settings and metadata and adding keywords as we import. Much the same stuff as we had in the previous import dialog, but just better organized and, and uh, um, easier to manage. And we've also obviously got our destination section where we say how we want these files that are imported to be uh, treated as they come in. So here we're going to have them organized all into one folder, which I've called Wacom Tag. Uh, and you can see here we've got a view very much like the folders view in Lightroom, where we've got the disks, and we can open the disks up and browse down the tree structure. And there we can see all of the uh, uh, available folders. And um, uh, one, other, one other nice feature, we can do doc folder. So if I want to sort of simplify this and say, I don't want to see all the rest of that tree structure, I just want to see the 2010 folder, I can do that. I can just doc folder, and now I'm just seeing that folder that I docked, which is a, a nice way of tidying up. If you're always working in one folder, it's a nice way of tidying up your view. Um, uh, a couple of other little uh, features here. Uh, we've also got a brand new import preset feature. Um, now, I've, I've had somebody say, oh, but the old one had import presets. Well, no, it didn't. What the old one did was it used to keep the same settings that you had last time, which was nice, um, unless, of course, you changed what you were importing from day to day and um, you left some keywords in the in the keyword section or, or you forgot to change the destination folder and you end up importing photos um, and adding uh, uh, irrelevant keywords or putting them in the wrong folder or something. The import preset feature um, prevents you from doing that because whenever you open this dialog now um, it goes back to some sensible defaults um, and if you do want to go ahead and use the same settings as last time save them as a preset and choose the preset out of this import preset box at the bottom. So you can see I've got an import preset there if I want to import things uh, from my iPad. and. Uh, one final trick, I don't really understand what this is supposed to do for you, but we've got this button in the bottom corner that simplifies the dialog down. We can still choose a preset, we can still choose uh, some metadata and keywords and stuff. Uh, I think the idea is that if you just want to have a real simple import dialog window because you're going to be using presets all the time, you can do that without needing to see all that extra stuff. Frankly, I'm a geek, I'm not too frightened by seeing a lot of controls, but maybe some people find this simpler. Um, so I don't find that a particular particularly useful feature, but but maybe your mileage will vary. Um, so having uh, set all of, showed you all of that, let's uncheck everything and just Im check that one that we want to import and everything else is set correctly. I'm going to choose the import button and off we go. So here's the image I've just imported. This is the one I just shot here on the desk. And I'm just going to do a quick crop and a quick rotate just to get this ready for us to work on it in Photoshop. So I'm going to jump into the develop module and I'm going to choose the crop tool, which you can get by pressing the R key or by pressing this button here just underneath your, histo your uh, histogram. Uh, and I'm going to use the angle tool, which is this button here. I can just drag this, but that's a very hard way to, to level something. If you click on this button, you get the little ruler, or the leveling tool, and you can... Uh, click and drag a line on your image and there we go that's nicely straightened now and you can see that's rotated our image by just over just over a degree so it was quite a long way out there um, now I'd also like to just roughly take off a bunch of the image data we're not going to use I am going to do another crop in a, in a minute but for the time being I just want a rough crop so I'm going to press enter on that and now we, we just need to do a final little bit of color adjustment before we go and work on this in uh, in Photoshop because this is looking a little bit magenta to my eye so I'm just going to drag the green and put magenta slider to the left to add a bit of green in and I'm not concerned with the other colors in it I just want to get a nice red on this tab here so because I'm going to I'm going to cut it out anyway 
we're not going to see the rest of that background so I'm just warming it up quite a lot um, so that's where we started and that's where we finished I'm just pressing the backslash key on my keyboard to see the before and after and you can see I've warmed that up quite a lot and that's making that uh, tab there a nice rich red which is what I want so having done all of that I can now edit this image in Photoshop just by right clicking on it and choosing edit in Photoshop CS5 and it's going to, because I haven't got the version 6.2 of the camera raw plugin, it's just asking me if I want to open it anyway. I need to get that updated, but for the time being, I'm just going to say open anyway. And here comes Photoshop. Right, I'm going to press F to go full screen. Um, I find that much easier to work with. And I've also just done a, a command option D to, to hide the dock there, which just gives you that little bit of extra space on the Mac, which is quite nice. Um, so we've done our rough crop. Uh, I'd like to just now uh, stretch this a little bit, but I, I don't want to stretch it with the text on because it's going to look a bit funky. So I think we need to get rid of the text first. So I'm going to grab the marquee tool. And we're going to use one of the brand new features in Photoshop CS5. I showed you this um, uh, uh, in a recentish show. Uh, I'm just going to draw around my text and I'm going to right click in that while I've got the marquee tool selected and choose fill. You can also go to the edit menu and choose fill there. And I'm going to use content aware to fill. So let's just see how this does. I'm going to press OK on that. And that's not too bad, I think you'll agree. Um, we're certainly not going to worry too much about this little area that's that's looking a little bit funky um, because I'm going to be putting text over this anyway. Let's just let's just do another fill with content aware and see if we can tidy that up just a shade. That's better. That's better. Right. So that's not bad at all. Um, so we've got a nice looking tab there and I'm going to just try and stretch that because I want it wider. The words photo walkthrough are quite a bit wider than Wacom. So I'm going to just grab my tab there and I'm going to do edit content aware scale and I'm going to stretch it wider and this is using that new feature that was added in Photoshop CS4 the content aware scaling which what it does is uh, it very cleverly figures out what it can stretch and what it can't and it does a, a really great job of resizing things um, without uh, destroying data and uh, uh, it, it's done a very nice job here we get a little bit of blurriness at the edges but one, once we're down to 500 pixels that really won't matter so we mustn't stress too much about that um, but we've just stretched it out to a size that, that will better suit our text so I'm going to deselect that again Okay, that's us done for another week. Thank you very much for watching. I will, of course, be back next week with the next episode in this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Please help support the show by using our sponsor's promo codes or by passing the promo codes on to your friends. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com. Photocastnetwork.com, your photography resource in the potosphere. Photocastnetwork.com